some late breaking news just north of downtown. Police responding to a deadly crash. A live look from the scene near West Hildebrand and Howard Street. That's where police say a man driving a truck crashed into another vehicle after running a red light. That truck driver thrown from the vehicle and killed. Officers say the people in the car he hit were not hurt. Details still limited at this time. Police say the person killed a man in his 40s. We don't know his name yet. Stay with us on air and online as we work to get you more information on this breaking story. To more news now, a stolen truck taken from one side of town leads to a deadly shooting on another. San Antonio police said the truck's owner tracked down his truck almost 20 miles away. Then he took matters into his own hands. The night team's John Paul Barajas explains how this all unfolded. Crime scene tape wraps around the scene of a deadly confrontation. That's what police say happened in this parking lot off Southeast Military and Goliad. Our suspect today stole the white truck you see back there. Uh, they stole it. Little did he know that it was tagged with the Apple AirTag. Nick Solis with San Antonio Police says that AirTag is what led the owner to the truck several hours after it was stolen off Brazeview on the city's north side, almost 20 miles from the shopping center and eventual shooting. They tried to confront the suspect who they saw in their vehicle. Uh, I don't know if an argument happened, but we know that during this time he believes that a firearm may have been pulled by the suspect. Police tell us the truck owner shot and killed a 30 year old suspect, but officers are still working to verify whether the suspect had a gun or not. The crime scene shows multiple evidence markers covering bullet casings and two vehicles with windows shot out. If you are to get your vehicle stolen, um, I know that it's frustrating, but please do not take matters into your own hands like this. Now, the owner of the truck and the two family members he was with at the time of the shooting had to come down here to public safety and make a statement. But at this time, they are not facing any charges. But we're told it is still early in the investigation. John Paul Barajas, KSA 2 Up News. Thank you, John Paul. Have you seen this person? She's been missing for nearly a week now and Bear County Sheriff's Office detectives asking for your help in finding her. 30 year old Lynette Martinez last seen on March 24th on Lucky Ledge Street in West Bear, Bear County near Loop 1604 and Highway 90. Investigators say she was wearing a red dress with black and white boots. She may have been wearing a cowboy hat as well. She's about five foot two, has black and purple hair. If you know anything that can help find her, you're asked to call BCSO at 210-335-6000. Will an argument among maintenance workers turn into attempted murder? One of those men arrested after he shot his co-worker this morning. San Antonio police tell us this happened at an apartment complex on FM 1560 near Holotus. They say the two men work there, and according to the suspect, he and the victim got into an argument while they were both on a golf cart. Things escalated. The suspect shot the victim. The victim taken to the hospital. The suspect turned himself in. Hope tonight. For a San Antonio community that is hurting, a church trying to heal a neighborhood hurt by violence. The night team's Patty Santos takes us to Lombrano and Zarsomora to see how a congregation is stepping in after police leave. This was a scene at the Lincoln Heights courts Monday. A man dead, four people coaxed out of an apartment along with two babies in arms. Harper's Chapel Ministry pastor Vincent Robinson went to see how he could help his neighbors in this tragic time. A lot of times even at pastors, I've learned sometimes you don't say nothing, you're just there for them. Being here and there for people, Robinson says, it's been his calling since he took over the church two years ago. The church has become a safety hub for neighbors. A lot of our community over here, there's a lot of trauma. There's a lot of trauma, there's a lot of mental trauma. With the help of his wife, Maria, and their congregation, the church feeds anyone who knocks on their doors. There you go, brother. Thank you. I'll see you. Okay, right. okay I'll be here. They provide clothes, food, harm reduction kits for addicts, health assessments, even mental health resources. After Monday's shooting, they met with police, stand up a say, and even walk the streets themselves. We talk to the community, we see what the family needs, whether it's the victim side or even the one that, that might have caused that. We want to be able to try to see how we can meet everyone's needs because there's grieving on both sides. There are over 20 churches in the area. Robinson says they would be stronger as a united front, and he's challenging churches across the city to do more together. There has to be a way that we come together. 
That was KSAT's Patty Santos reporting. Now, Harper's Chapel Ministries, it's on Lombrano. Every Wednesday from 11 to 2, they open their doors for a weekly hub with community partners to try to help and serve the neighborhood. Pope Francis in the hospital in Rome after being diagnosed with a respiratory infection. That's according to the Vatican press office. They say the infection will require several days of appropriate hospital medical treatment. Doctors explaining the risks of respiratory infection pose because as a young man, the Pope had part of a lung removed after a severe case of pneumonia. Less normal lung tissue you have, the less pulmonary reserve you have. And so that may present a risk in terms of his available pulmonary resources to fight this particular infection. There are a lot of people worried tonight. This marks the first time the Pope has been admitted to the hospital since having surgery in July of 2021. The Archbishop of San Antonio among those praying for the Pope. And all of us who experience at one point in our lives suffering, pain, illnesses. Well, he does too. And in that sense, we feel more bond to him. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we become more one. All this happening during a busy time of the year in the Catholic Church with Holy Week celebrations approaching. Temperature out there right now, 65 degrees. That was actually our high temperature today as well. Notice how the temperature is held steady and it's not going to drop much as we go through the night. What you're going to bed to is just about what you'll wake up to in San Antonio, 62 degrees tomorrow morning. So we'll shave off about three degrees and dropping into the upper fifties in the hill country. The humidity is changing overnight as well. That's going to have a few implications with it. We'll talk about that, its effects and our rain chances in just a bit, Steve. Thank you, Adam. You know, he's called San Antonio home. Now he is returning to San Antonio. U.S. State Department officer said Paul Recessa Bagina touched down in Houston this afternoon before he flew to Bamsey here in San Antonio. Last week, it was announced that Recessa Bagina would be freed from a jail in Rwanda where he'd been for three years. His family said he was unfairly arrested while on an overseas trip, then jailed and convicted wrongly on terrorism charges. Recessa Bagina says his arrest was in response to criticism over Rwanda's alleged human rights abuses and its president. His family is here in San Antonio. Paul, still very much a human rights activist. He was actually the inspiration for the movie Hotel Rwanda, where he saved more than a thousand people's lives there. Now for a look at some of today's big headlines in your Nightbeat News Flash. Homeland Security making an arrest in that deadly train car smuggling case in Canipa last week. Deniso Carranza Gonzalez told investigators he was the foot guide for the 12 Honduran nationals found in a train car last week. Two of those migrants were found dead, the rest of them severely injured after being trapped inside one of those train cars. A man wounded after getting into a shootout with police this afternoon. It happened about 1230 at Arnold Park. That's near the intersection of Gillette Boulevard and South Zarzamora. Chief William McManus said the suspect shot at police at least 12 times when they confronted him. Officers fired back and hit him. The suspect taken to the hospital. No officers were hurt. Some good news about the child who was hurt when a huge section of a tree fell on top of her at the San Antonio Zoo. You remember this story? University Health tells us that girl has been released from the hospital. It was two weeks ago when she and several others were hit by that tree. What great news here. We sent her and her family our best wishes. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Well, the continuous Medicaid coverage provided during the COVID-19 pandemic, it ends on Friday, but that does not mean recipients are losing their benefits. Instead, recipients will simply need to renew or reapply sometime over the next year. Medicaid open to qualifying Americans who are pregnant over the age of 65 or living with a disability. Current recipients will then be notified when it's their turn to renew or reapply. That'll be done by mail or through your Texas benefits for those who've opted to go paperless. Again, benefits will not end when continuous coverage ends on Friday. For the first time, a treatment that reverses the effects of opioids and saves lives will be available over the counter now. We told you about Narcan last night on the night beat. The product, a nasal spray that contains naloxone. That's the generic version of Narcan. The Food and Drug Administration approved the over-the-counter treatment as a package of two doses in case the person overdosing doesn't respond to the first dose. The naloxone nasal spray can be given to anyone, even children and babies. 
major breakthrough. We're staying on top of the opioid epidemic. By the way, our Fighting Fentanyl series continues both on air and online. Just scan this QR code on your screen. It's going to take you straight to all of our fentanyl coverage on KSAT.com. 50 years since the end of the Vietnam War and one of San Antonio's largest employers held an event to honor those who served. And he says he's an eyewitness to a murder. He took the stand in court today. What he had to say next on the night beat. He says he's an eyewitness to a murder. He took the stand today in the trial of Jimmy Tran. He's facing a capital murder charge for a deadly shooting in 2019. As Eric Hernandez explains, that witness saw the shooting, but in court could not identify Tran as the shooter. Do you remember the events for why you're here that happened on August 12th, 2019? I think so, yes. Mr. Dolan, an eyewitness to the deadly robbery and shooting of 22-year-old Andres Salinas, took the stand today. Salinas was allegedly selling drugs to Jimmy Tran and Sebastian Espinad when prosecutors say the two robbed him and fatally shot him. Dolan says he lives on the streets and was behind the building talking to a friend when he noticed a Wingstop employee walk toward a white car. What caught your attention today? Car. Gunshots. When the gunshots happened, what did you do? Just kind of sat there. Dolan says he saw two men with guns shooting and then speed off in the white vehicle they came in. Meanwhile, during cross-examination, the defense focused on asking Mr. Dolan several times if Tran was, in fact, the shooter he saw that night. You had an opportunity to see our client, Jimmy Tran. He is not... The guy you saw as a shooter that day, right? I don't believe who he is. Jimmy Tran is not the person you saw as a shooter on that day. I don't think so. Tran is facing a capital murder charge in this case. Co-defendant Sebastian Espinad has since taken a plea deal for 25 years in exchange for his testimony against Tran. That testimony could take place as early as tomorrow. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. It's proven controversial, but the city of San Antonio is stepping up its efforts to keep the noise down at small businesses. Applications are now open for its noise mitigation program. Businesses can apply for grants to help lower their noise levels. The money can be used for equipment or renovations. 20 bars and restaurants, outdoor music venues could get up to $7,500 each as part of this plan. USAA has done a fabulous job of honoring veterans from the Vietnam War, and I'm just so honored and glad to be here to be part of it. That is Colonel Lee Ellis, a retired member of the U.S. Air Force. He was actually shot down during a combat mission in 1967, held as a prisoner of war for more than five years in Vietnam. Today, Colonel Ellis was at USAA's recognition of Vietnam War vets on the 50th anniversary of the end of the Vietnam War. The event today held to honor the more than 9 million men and women who served in the U.S. military during the Vietnam era. Take a live look outside. 65 degrees today was cooler mm -hmm. than it's been. So what does tomorrow have in store, Adam? Well, temperatures are on the upswing. A warming trend is beginning today. You know, 65 was our high temperature. That's currently where we are, and that's 12 degrees below average. Now, the humidity, it's on the upswing as we speak. That's going to lead to some mugginess and even dampness, not just tomorrow, but into Friday. And our warming trend, it does begin. Uh, take a look at our temperature trend. Tomorrow, we're up to 78 for the high temperature. Friday, 88 degrees, so really feeling like spring again uh, just over the next few days. And then early, or I should say early next week, we're in the lower 90s for high temperatures. All right, let's talk about the influx of moisture and what this means. Dew points now low to mid 50s, 52 at the airport in town and 50 in Hondo. So you don't really feel the stickiness out there right now, but that's going to be changing. The wind is coming off the Gulf of Mexico and it's going to start gradually increasing these dew points. In turn, the humidity is slowly rising. Not only will you notice the mugginess 
out there first thing in the morning and especially into the afternoon with dew points well into the 60s then. But you'll also kind of see it as well. Some drizzle, sprinkles, areas of fog developing late tonight and especially by sunrise tomorrow. We had significant cloud cover this evening. No big large scale features across Texas to really generate some good rain. That's all on the west coast right now. This big pinwheel of a low pressure system just slamming into the west coast again. Another system slamming into California. Higher elevation snow, already a record breaking season for snow in the Sierra Nevadas and even parts of Utah and the Rocky Mountains. But around here, no big scale system. We're just dealing with these little nuances from time to time. Here's our future cast. So we'll have some dampness, but not much in terms of real rain. On the radar tomorrow at any given time, you'll probably see some little green blotches here and there popping up, but it's going to be very light in nature and unfortunately probably just add up to a few hundredths of an inch from time to time rather than really giving us some meaningful rainfall. Overall, over the next seven days, the highest potential, unfortunately, is just outside of our area. You look at the general trend in terms of rainfall and precipitation potential, and where we lack it is in the Great Plains, the Central Plains, the Southern Plains, and all the way down here into South Central Texas. We're gonna be right on the edge of some of the activity. So tomorrow, that 40% chance is really just those sprinkles scattered around at any given time. And then Friday, a 20% chance of a few light showers in the morning, but we will have some drizzle there as well. And then Sunday afternoon, the off chance of some pop-up afternoon storms. Right now, we give it a 20% chance. So here's your case at 12 to 12 hour forecast 62 degrees at 7 a.m. By noon, we're up to 70, still cloudy, and I think it's still going to be pretty damp in most areas by the noon hour into the afternoon. We have the chance of getting a little bit of sun, a few breaks in the clouds and peaks of sunshine and 78 degrees for the high temperature and a southeasterly wind at 5 to 15. Farther southeast of town, low 80. So Pleasanton, 82. Nixon, Smiley, 81, along with Gonzalez. But up in the hill country, Kerrville Comfort and Bernie, 75 degrees for your high tomorrow. By Friday, up to 88. Do it again in the morning with the drizzle and a few stray showers. Into the weekend, partly cloudy. A little drop in the humidity, by the way, on Saturday. And then Palm Sunday in the afternoon. We just have to keep an eye out for a few thunderstorms popping up. Next week, we are back into the 90s. I want to give a shout out to some visitors for spring break. Garden Ridge taking in our blue bonnets. But Mimi's happy to have them around. I bet. What a great picture, too. Mm -hmm. That says Texas, right? It there. does. Look at those yeah. smiles. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Adam. All right, so I know there's a method to a madness. I know we're trying to get the number one pick, but the real question now is will the Spurs win another game before the season ends? Man, with six games to go, and they're, I think they need one win to tie their worst record in franchise history, two to break it. I don't know, man. It's yeah. hard to say because at times they look really good, other times they don't. Coming up, the Spurs played their final home game tonight, and I think Jeremy Sohan probably fired the Jazz up. And Jordan Farr won a pretty cool weekly honor coming up. fans here, you're about to lose tonight. Go Spurs, go! <laughs> that was Jeremy Sohan addressing the crowd at the AT&T Center, but unfortunately his words did not come true on game day. It was fan appreciation night at the AT&T Center for the Spurs' last home game this season in San Antonio. First quarter, Trey Jones steals the ball, goes on the fast break, he's going to pass it to Bates Diop, goes back to Jones for a sweet layup and the first bucket of the game. Jones with the ball again feeds Mamu, who passes to Zach Collins for a slam dunk and we're tied at 14. Utah led 36-33 after one. Second quarter, Malachi Branham steals the pass and scores. Spurs trailed by four. More Mamu, now Devontae Graham feeds him for a sweet shot out the window and and the foul free throw was good. It's 55-52 Jazz. Closing seconds, Chris Dunn hits one for Utah, giving them the lead at halftime, 64-62. Third quarter now, Spurs down nine. Mamu fakes a three, then drives scoops and scores, cutting the lead down to seven, but the Spurs trailed after three, 93-88. 
Utah opened the fourth on a 10 to two run, done three ball. Jazz go up by 15, timeout Spurs. They trail by as many as 19 in the fourth, but they fight back to get it close. Trey Jones steals the pass, then dimes Branham for some jam, and San Antonio is down seven with 118 to go. But too little too late. The Spurs fall in their final home game, 128 to 117. We're all very competitive. We want to go out there and win, you know, every game. But um, just understanding, um, you know, like you said, the, with our age, um, you know, we're, we're trying to build something here. And we, we all definitely do understand that. And so continue to just try to learn as much as we can and um, knowing that it'll pay off in the long run. The Spurs start a three-game West Coast road trip this Friday against the Warriors at 9 p.m. Dallas Cowboys owner and general manager Jerry Jones made headlines this week when he said the Cowboys didn't offer Ezekiel Elliott a contract prior to releasing him as a salary cap casualty and when he said he considered bringing Zeke back if he doesn't sign with another team. So far, he hasn't. How difficult was it for Mike McCarthy to say bye-bye to Elliott? I know my time, you know, with, with I admired about Zeke going back to the pandemic, you know, when we had our meetings out into the Ford Center and, you know, Zeke sat in the you know, first seat front row. And so, I mean, he's, he's very coachable, um, a great teammate, you know, he's, he's, he's loved in the locker room. So, I mean, I, all those things factor. But, you know, I think just like anything, you know, the, the financial, you know, puzzle, you're always trying to put it together and, and trying to, you know, build and grow your football team. So these decisions are always very difficult. Zeke named the Eagles as one of the three teams he'd like to play for. Well, Eagles head coach Nick Sirianni addressed that and said they feel really good about their running backs as of right now. With the second overall selection in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Texans are expected to take a quarterback. The two main names are Ohio State QB C.J. Stroud and Alabama quarterback Bryce Young. Carolina traded with Chicago to move up to the first overall selection, and they are expected to draft one of those guys as well. Texans head coach D'Amico Ryans was asked what's the most important thing he looks for in a quarterback, and he said leadership style. Is that quarterback a guy who can galvanize a locker room and rally the troops and get guys to believe in him? That's the trait, and it's easier said than done because only so few guys can do that, right? And it's special guys, and that's a special position where you can find a guy that his teammates can rally behind, teammates believe in him, that's when you know you have a guy. Ryan's also said that former Texans head coach Gary Kubiak has given him a shoulder to lean on during his early days of being a head coach. Jordan Farr wins a weekly honor and coach pop on the back of a guy's head after the break. San Antonio FC goalkeeper Jordan Farr was named the USL Championship Player of the Week. He earned the spot after making five saves and a shutout win over Colorado Springs on Saturday, including his penalty stop and stoppage time to preserve the 1-0 win on the final kick of the night. It's just about doing the job at the end of the day. Like goalkeeping is, is, a, is a very specific position that doesn't have a whole lot of relevance in the broad spectrum of the game. But in those tiny moments, that's like where you kind of make your name, um, make, so to speak. And so for me, it's just about being prepared in the right moments and not trying to do too much. SAFC midfielder Mohamed Abu made the league's team of the week as well. All right, check it out. A Spurs fan with head coach Greg Popovich shaved into the back of his head. Guy was also wearing a basketball Hall of Fame shirt with pictures of Pop. So coach, along with Tony Parker and Becky Hammond, are among the finalists voted into the Hall of Fame per reports. This guy walked up to us before our 6 o'clock live shot and said, you want to see the back of my head. Yeah, he was right. That's pretty cool. Yeah. What do you call that? A Papa shave? A Papa shave. <laughs> Something like that, maybe? I don't know. Papa cut. Papa cut. Oh, I like that one. Papa yeah. cut. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't get it done, but I yeah. like it. Yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. Thanks, Larry. We'll be right back. Before you go, check this out. Some new emojis coming to an iPhone near you. 21 of them, to be exact, in Apple's new iOS update. Among them, a jellyfish, a hair pick, maracas, and more. That brings the total number of available emojis on Apple devices to more than 3,600. By the way, the jackpot for Lotto Texas continues to grow after there was no winner on Monday night. Right now, the top prize, $59 million, an estimated cash value, $36.1 million. It's actually the largest state lottery jackpot in 12 years. Drizzly and sprinkly to start the day tomorrow and even into the early to mid-afternoon. We'll clear out a little bit Friday afternoon. Thank you, Adam. Have a great night. We'll see you back here tomorrow.